William Acton rose to his feet. The clock on the mantel ticked midnight. He looked at his fingers, and he looked at the large room around him, and he looked at the man lying on the floor. William Acton, whose fingers had struck typewriter keys and made love and fried ham and eggs for early breakfasts, had now accomplished a murder with those same ten world fingers. He had never thought of himself as a sculptor, and yet, in this moment, looking down between his hands at the body upon the polished hardwood floor, he realized that by some sculptural clenching and remodeling and twisting of human clay he had taken hold of this man named Donald Huxley and changed his physiognomy, the very frame of his body. With a twist of his fingers he had wiped away the exacting glitter of Huxley's eyes, replaced it with a blind dullness of eye cold and socket. The lips, always pink and sensuous, were gaped to show the equine teeth, the yellow incisors, the nicotined canines, the gold inlaid molars. The nose, pink also, was now mottled, pale, discolored, as were the ears. Huxley's hands, upon the floor, were open, pleading for the first time in their lives, instead of demanding. Yes, it was an artistic conception. On the whole, the change had done Huxley a share of good. Death had made him a handsomer man to deal with. You could talk to him now, and he'd have to listen. William Acton looked at his own fingers. It was done. He could not change it back. Had anyone heard? He listened. Outside, the normal late sounds of street traffic continued. There was no banging of the house door, no shoulder wrecking the portal into kindling, no voices demanding entrance. The murder, the sculpturing of clay from warmth to coldness was done, and nobody knew. Now what? The lock ticked midnight. His every impulse exploded him in a hysteria toward the door. Rush. Get away. Run. Never come back. Board a train. Hail a taxi. Get. Go. Run. Walk. Saunter. But get the blazes out of here. His hands hovered before his eyes, floating, turning. He twisted them in slow deliberation. They felt airy and feather light. Why was he staring at them this way? He inquired of himself. Was there something in them of immense interest that he should pause now, after a successful throttling, and examine them whorl by whorl? They were ordinary hands, not thick, not thin, not long, not short, not hairy, not naked, not manicured, and yet not dirty, not soft, and yet not calloused, not wrinkled, and yet not smooth, not murdering hands at all, and yet not innocent. He seemed to find them miracles to look upon. It was not the hands as hands he was interested in, nor the fingers as fingers. In the numb timelessness and after an accomplished violence, he found interest only in the tips of his fingers. The clock ticked upon the mantel. He knelt by Huxley's body, took a handkerchief from Huxley's pocket, and began methodically to swab Huxley's throat with it. He brushed and massaged the throat and wiped the face and the back of the neck with fierce energy. Then he stood up. He looked at the throat. He looked at the polished floor. He bent slowly and gave the floor a few dabs with the handkerchief. Then he scowled and swabbed the floor. First, near the head of the corpse. Secondly, near the arms. Then he polished the floor all around the body. He polished the floor one yard from the body on all sides. He polished the floor two yards from the body on all sides. Then he polished the floor three yards from the body in all directions. Then he... he stopped. That, friends, is the beginning of one of the stories, one of 32 stories in this collection, The Golden Apples of the Sun by Ray Bradbury. I, uh, your table of contents, I think, will vary based on which uh, edition of the book you have. It sounds like there are some editions that might have only 20, 22 stories. Uh, this one has 32 uh, and that came from The Fruit at the Bottom of the Pole, which was one of the early stories in this collection. And my goodness, was this like a breath of fresh air. Uh, I had started this collection a couple months ago, you know, trying to, to read a short story a day out of various anthologies and, you know, just got sidetracked with all of the 
the books that I was trying to juggle at the time. And then June came, and busyness came, and a reading slump came. And it was Ray, who was there to pull me out. And in the last three, four, five days, something like that, I've read two-thirds of this book and had a hard time putting it down. The stories in here are magnificent. Uh, there are a lot of stories that are very familiar. Uh, there are stories straight out of the Martian Chronicles. There are some stories out of the Illustrated Man. There are even some stories out of Dan the Lion Wine. Um, and there are stories in here that are probably anthologized in, in a different, dozen different places. And the real reason that I wanted to pick this one up uh, and, and get to it sooner rather than later is because I knew it had the Sound of Thunder in there. And that is highly, highly regarded as one of Bradbury's best stories, if not his best. Uh, so I wanted to finally encounter that story, and it is fabulous. I don't think it's my favorite story. I think my favorite short story by Bradbury still might be The Belt, uh, which is just fantastic. It is not in this collection. But there are so many excellent ones in here that it would be hard to pick a, a favorite. I could probably narrow down a couple that weren't favorites. As with any anthology, you're, you're going to have that. Some stories are going to work better for you than others. Um, but but some of the standouts, let's just pop this up. How it opens up, the Foghorn, is fantastic. Uh, Fruit at the Bottom of the Bowl is excellent. Uh, the Flying Machine is good. The Golden Kite, the Silver Wind is outstanding. Got the Garbage Collector, which was really good. Uh, Artist for Rocket was great. The Rocket and the Rocket Man. A Sound of Thunder. The Long Rain. The Exiles. Here There Be Tigers. The Dragon. Uh, the Time Machine. The Sound of Summer Running. I mean, all of those are outstanding stories in here. And, and I don't think there was a single story that I disliked in here. Uh, wh which is pretty true for Bradbury as a whole. Um, I, I don't know that I've encountered a Bradbury story that completely fell flat for me. There are some that resonate far better than others, of course. And my gosh, th this is outstanding. It it's fantastic. If you have not read anything by Ray Bradbury, uh, my recommendation is still always going to be to start with, uh, if you're looking for short stories by him, uh, to start with either the Martian Chronicles or the Illustrated Man because those have kind of a, a loosely woven narrative threading things together. Uh, but this would not be a bad place to start. If you're looking more for a, a longer story by Bradbury, a longer book, my, my recommendation, of course, is Fahrenheit 451. Uh, later this year, I'll be reading The Halloween Tree and rereading for the first time in quite some time. Something Wicked This Way Comes, which would be two others that I know uh, get mentioned a lot for his longer works. And I'm excited to get to both of those later. Um, if you don't know, uh, last year I, I took upon a challenge to read every book by an author. And, and the winner of the spin was Ray Bradbury. And I've done a terrible job in 2022 of getting through Bradbury. This is the first one I've finished. But I have a feeling I'm going to quickly be rolling over into the Halloween tree. So it will not be the last Bradbury I finish this summer. Um, so yeah, that's... I just wanted to give quick thoughts because... It, it's so great when you get pulled out of a reading slump. And to be able to give credit to a particular book, a particular story, whatever the case may be, that helped pull you out of that slump. And in this case, it, it was very much Ray Bradbury over the last couple days has pulled me out. Uh, and, and I'm looking forward to getting back to doing some reading, to finding some uh, joy in reading again. And uh, once again, I will recommend this. This is a great collection. Uh, you would not go wrong with this being uh, one that you pick up and read by Ray Bradbury. So uh, thank you, BookTube, and uh, have a great day.